front drive architecture. So we'll try to walk you through. I'm here all day. If you have questions, uh, well, anytime today, or if you want me to drive a car with you, feel free. So we'll start with all-wheel drive systems, sort of the Dodge Chrysler variety. Well, the first one is the 2015 Chrysler 200 that we'll have available. And this is first in its segment, disconnecting all-wheel drive system. We have some, some examples of hardware here if we want to talk about that. But there's two critical units. The first is a PTU in the front of the car attached to the transaxle, which has a mechanical coupling that can open and close. And then in the rear, we have an active clutch. So imagine, this is the hardware under the car driving towards me. There would normally be a transaxle here. Taking it out of the picture so you can see it clearly. So between the, the active clutch and the PTU mechanical clutch, you can fully disconnect. And that means when you don't need all-wheel drive, in two-wheel drive mode, the prop shaft does not rotate, the gears do not rotate, and uh, tapered roller bearings, anything else that gives a parasitic loss is not in the equation. So this allows us to, to have the best fuel efficiency in a uh, V6 all-wheel drive sedan. So we can move on to the Dodge Journey. The Dodge Journey, we have a different approach. So we have a P2 that does not disconnect, but we have a pinion-mounted electronically controlled coupling. And we can control this to to re remove all the, the torque capacity of the clutch when it's not needed. So at highway speed, we can provide the optimal fuel economy. Yet it does still have off-road capability or on-road capability. I guess we can move to the all-wheel drive, rear drive based architectures. So the Chrysler 300 utilizes two critical components. Behind the transmission is an active transfer case, which has an active clutch that controls how much torque goes to the front at any given time, based on vehicle speed, the driver's throttle, uh, we'll say yaw rate, which we don't really need anything to do. But it has a secondary item that is also unique, and it's called a front axle disconnect. So again, we have a mechanical clutch that can open and close, so we can get, even though it's an all-wheel drive setup, we can have it act as a rear drive car when all wheel drive isn't necessary. Which gives it best in segment for that size vehicle, 27 miles per gallon highway. There's also the Dodge Durango, has a similar system with the transfer case, sort of a 50 50 weight split. Also available with a low range, so great ability. People want to pull boats out of a ramp, you can get even uh, further utilization. We'll move on to four-wheel drive systems or four-by-four four systems. So again, we have front drive based and rear drive based. Four-by-four four system that's front drive based is, as far as I'm concerned, unheard of and pretty much ruled by Jeep. So first, we'll talk about the Jeep Cherokee. There's three systems available on the Cherokee. Active Drive 1, which again would utilize the PTU with the disconnect and a wet clutch in the RDM. So active drive one in the Jeep Cherokee will give you the same on-road sure-footedness, uh, completely capable on-road, but the ability to disconnect to give, again, optimal fuel efficiency. Active drive two adds a, a low range, and this is a true mechanical planetary reduction that is housed in the PTU and also the RDM. So in a, in a transfer case with low range, transmission gives it the torque, and the transfer case will multiply it and then divide it to the two axles. This architecture doesn't lend itself to it in front drive, so we actually split it to the rear and to the front, and then we multiply it in both places, first in the PTU and also in the RDM. And this provides a front drive vehicle with high range, a low range 4x4, and also neutral. So RVers that want to flat tow or dinging tow the vehicle behind their RV have that ability. Because the transmission is truly disconnected, they don't need to do any additional checks or stops along the way. And then there's Jeep Active Drive Lock, exclusive to the Trailhawk. 
and you get to experience this in the afternoon on the off-road portion. But we take the Active Drive 2 system and we add a mechanical locking differential to the rear. So this is, again, there's hardware here, but this is a true mechanical electrical locker. It's not a brake system, it's not a clutch system, it's mechanical locked across the rear axle. Also, uh, here today is the Jeep Renegade, coming, in, coming available soon. It has two, two systems as well that are also disconnecting. It has active drive for your on-road, slippery or muddy performance. And then it has active drive low, where it utilizes a low range. So it gives you a 20 to 1 crawl ratio. It's a little less than a Cherokee, which is 48 or 56, depending on the configuration. But you'll be able to feel the difference of how these vehicles can maneuver on the off-road uh, course. And then also, please check the on-road here. Uh, we'll talk about select train in a moment. And then we also have Compass and Patriot here with Freedom Drive 1, and then the off-road version of Freedom Drive 2. Freedom Drive 2 gives you a CVT 2L, which gives you better gradeability and uh, trail rated off-road performance. In the select terrain, when you get into the cars, you can, you can alter the modes. The select terrain is a great way for you, the driver, to tell the car what you're experiencing or how you want it to behave. So if you're in snow, you can pick a snow mode. So this happens to be from a Grand Cherokee. You'll see this in the Cherokee, and then this is the full pedal. And the vehicle doesn't have to predict what you're trying to, to accomplish. So in snow, we can change many systems, the powertrain controller, the trans shift, the way the brakes interact, and also the all-wheel drive coupling behavior. And they can all work together to make your experience driving in whatever terrain you have appropriate. The select train is also how we accomplish our four low and rear locker, as well as hill descent. And then the bottom one is select speed, sort of an off-road cruise control, which is a really cool gadget. allows uh, very good control of the car, and you can set it using the ERS in the trail model. We'll move on to the rear-wheel drive-based four-wheel drive systems. So the, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Again, has three systems. We have the Quadratrack 1, which gives you a single speed, full-time system. Quadratrack 2, which again gives you uh, a system that has a low range. So people who, again, I always use the boat launch as an example, because that great ability, the ease of tow, and the control you can have in a low range gives you more comfort as you're trying to, to pull that kind of load up a grade, especially Slippery. Quadrant Drive 2 adds an electrically controlled limited slip differential. So if you have a, a different frictions on each rear tire, it can, it can act in that manner, but also helps in on road dynamic driving. So it can couple or decouple the rear wheels infinitely. So you're not, it's not an on off system, but it gives you infinite control to help that yaw that you're trying to experience or rotate the car. We also have a Jeep Wrangler. So we've got the Sport and Sahara, which are uh, 45 to 1 crawl ratio, Dana 30 in the front, Dana 44 in the rear, and then up to the Rubicon, where it's Dana 44 front and rear. But the, the Rock Track in the Rubicon gives you a 410 to 1 transfer case low ratio, which results in a 73 to 1 crawl. So we talked about the Ram 1500, more of a traditional system with the transfer case, uh, five link rear axle. And the control on this, depending on how it's equipped, is either a rotary control knob, which I think we've all seen in the past, and then there's also the push button control. The push button gives you all the modes just the same. Two wheel drive, four high, four low, and again, neutral or whatever recreational or uh, thingy so you, you want to do. The Ram Power Wagon steps this up another notch, goes to an 11 and a half 
inch rear axle. And also, this is a beam front with electric locking differentials front and rear. So again, great off-road capability. Then the heavy duty, again, also has 